She Mario on my Luigi till I Zelda on her link. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the game skates today and only today. We are here to talk about the legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in general, Breath of the Wild 2. Um, because we got you know what? Listen, listen, I just listen, we need to talk about this, all right? Because we've we've had an Elden Ring, we've had a lot going on, people are talking about stuff. So let's we gotta talk about this, okay? So listen, first of all, of course, continue to enjoy these videos, all right? Like, subscribe, do all that, just do it right now. I'm waiting three, two, one. Of course, you did. I believe in you. Uh, and thank you for supporting all the content in general. Before I pass away from my voice leaving my soul, ah! I'm back. I'm good. All right. So, guys, here we go. Let's talk about Breath of the Wild. So, guys, listen. I, as a lot of you know, a little video game came out recently called Elden Ring. You might have heard of it once or twice. It might have come up in thin air somehow. You know, you might. It might. Your 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 long lost brother could have told you about it. Your mother could have been like, "Oh, stop playing Elden Ring, you dumb bitch! I'll fucking knock your head out!" Oh, whatever. So you might have heard of this game, but of course, Elden Ring been taking over the conversation. And it is, I really do think it is the first game, genuinely, since Breath of the Wild, to actually bring up the conversation of a game that is in that vein. Now, we've had games over the years that, you know, have taken elements, and that's okay, whatever, everybody do their thing, right? But I feel like Elden Ring is, is it feels like the first game in a long time to rival it, in a sense. And what I mean by that, right, is, I've said this on Twitter and, and stuff like that, where these games have the same philosophy of like all right you are thrust in this world and you are going to make the journey based on what is in the environment you know both games have a set things in their worlds and areas and all this stuff and it's about like you know how you approach them when you approach them what you do um but they have different design philosophies you know with elden ring it is still an rpg like a full rpg you know you are leveling up there are there are very clear things you will not be able to do if you're not leveled up you know you have all these skill things you can unlock and it's just it's much different obviously you have the difficulty thing it's which i know yes you can mitigate by leveling up but it is still a massive factor of the game with the legend of zelda breath of the wild in general the first one now the second whatever is gonna happen with the second one it is it's different right like yes they, it has the same philosophy of you know go out in this world figure it out see what happens there and obviously it is very clear elden ring has a lot of zelda influences in it which is good that's a good thing um but with breath of the wild a lot of it comes to more the, that physics engine and the creative stuff you can do with it you know it's not the same thing in breath in in elden ring. like in, in breath of the wild like if there's a, a rainstorm and use like you know uh some sort of item to react to the rain it'll react to it you know if you're if you're running through fire and you use an ice rod you can like get that you can not get hurt by the fire you know and obviously like, if you tumble down if you tumble this rock down a hill you know it's gonna have like a clashing effect with everything else in the environment you know, there's like a bunch of millions of things you guys all know this it's a lot of that physics engine of breath of the wild is what makes it so interesting because everybody's solving things in the way they would logically want to approach them you know if you if there's a river you can choose you know do you want to cut a tree and then like drop the log to get to the other side do you want to use like the little cryosis thingy to get to the other side of it do you like it's all about the ways you approach stuff and the creative ways you solve everything in that world because there are a bunch of secrets in that world for sure but once they've been discovered it's all about like how you solve a lot of these puzzles and stuff um whereas with you know elden ring it's more like you're gonna fight this thing what items and power-ups and, and build are you going to have in that so they're, they're different in that sense of the philosophy but that's not what i want to talk about right i want to talk about more like breath of the wild 2 right we had the first game which is incredible and now we've had you know um a lot of time since then you know where like people have i think breath of the wild in a good way has stood the test of time of people saying it's immaculate you know i mean still selling i mean i think it's almost at 25 million copies sold which is by far the best selling zelda game and i just think like that that game has still kept its reputation as iconic you know and that's the reason people compare it to so many games just because it is a game that whether you would like to hear it or not it has influenced game design and how games are approached you know what i mean and i think that's something a lot of people are weird about like they'll get mad at people for making the comparison or like saying that games are doing stuff that brother wall did when like they do and and that's normal like no shit when when the the world like all developers see like that when they make an open world after breath of the wild that like you know it may be it might look insane to have like fifty thousand markers on the map or that like everything is guided to you and told where to go and all that stuff um and the sense of exploration felt like mundane until like breath of the wild really encouraged a lot of developers to make it so hey like 
What if you give people more options to move around? You know, what if you give them more agency and all that stuff? And that's that's okay. That's natural. But obviously, what makes games special is everyone has their spin on everything. I mean, with video games especially, everything is taken from every other thing out there, you know. But it's about how you put your spin on it and make it creative. And I think with Breath of the Wild 2, it has to challenge itself, which I think is the hardest challenge, right? Because, you know, other games, you know, they're set in other worlds. They have other stuff. With The Legend of Zelda, you are competing with yourself there, right? And with Breath of the Wild 2, we've only seen that one gameplay trailer. Um, and we saw a few mechanics, and we have that mechanic where, like, he could sort of rewind an aspect that's going on in the environment, which that I know is going to be insane. People are going to do crazy shit with whatever that mechanic is. We have this sort of mechanic where we can go to, like, the upwards islands. We don't know how that works yet. We don't know if, like, we don't even know if that's a mechanic or if that's just, like, a story thing where, like, you just, that's how you fast travel and stuff. You know, it's not very clear that there's, like, a firearm you can get. There's a lot of cool stuff to look forward to in that game and a lot of good stuff that that looks amazing about it but like i want to know what is going to be that world right like is it are we going to be in the hyrule you were in in breath of the wild you know one um but it's going to be you know more brutal it's going to have new stuff and in new areas or is it going to be that like you know they're going to like take us to a different part of that hyrule because like, we could see that i mean like the high just because we were in Hyrule doesn't mean we saw all of it i mean it's a massive massive world basically and they could just thrust this in a new map there maybe you can visit some areas from the first area it's really hard to tell how they're going to approach it because like i don't know like you've been working on this for so long what are you gonna do to go to different environments because we've seen environments from the first game in trailers here. so that's like my biggest question of like how are we gonna approach this world are we gonna mainly be in that sky world that we've been seeing a lot of you know or is it going to be that we're gonna be a mix of you know the 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 land and, and the sky like I, I don't or this under there was some underground areas maybe there are like it's really really hard to tell how they're gonna be able to mix up that world and i believe in them i know i know they're gonna make something crazy but it's just genuinely like it makes you really think like what is going to go down with this you know with this game like what is going to be that's what i'm so curious about and the fact that they still call you know the sequel to the legend of zelda breath of the wild without titling it because they're saying it's a spoiler now i assume when they say spoiler i don't think it necessarily like is gonna be like a, a direct call out to a different Zelda game. People think it might be Skyward Sword, which it could be because you know you have the sky areas and stuff. Um, it's that, or it could just be the main mechanic of the game we don't know yet. Because again, we have yet to have a big info blowout of this game, and I think that's going to happen at E3. You know, like usually Nintendo at E3, they'll have like the lot the, their big game, they'll spend like 10 plus minutes on it like they did with smash like they did with breath of the wild back then like they did with odyssey with like well odyssey was a little shorter but still like it was it was their game of that show and i think that's what they're gonna do with breath of the wild you know i think they need like a big trailer to be like hey here's the hook you know here's more of this area here's what's gonna go down um and it's gonna be really interesting to see right because they've also taken feedback from breath of the wild and i mean obviously the biggest the two biggest pieces of criticism from the first brother wild are the are the obviously the uh divine beast um and the second one being the uh what is it the, the weapon breaking now i still think weapon breaking is fine because it's a game where you are able to go anywhere in this map you could probably get the craziest item in the game uh and it would make sense that it would break i mean like think about it like if somebody like ran to to inside of uh, ganon's tower right they got the craziest weapon and then they dip and then they just had that the whole game it would just make things a little less fun but the fact that like you go in there you get that weapon it has to break at some point you have to manage whether you want that or not and you get i don't want to get into the weapon breaking mechanic i thought it was actually i thought it was cool and i liked it but i understand why people don't like it that's on a, a personal basis there but yeah I'm, I'm wondering here like when it comes to this game right obviously there's going to be it's all, all its hooks in there but what are they gonna do to really to elevate things a notch you know when they show it at e3 like i i think there's a hook we're gonna be we're gonna be understanding maybe i mean like i like i said we know that though you have this new mechanic where like you can sort of like rewind certain things you're doing like there was a part where like boulders were falling and then like link used this status rewind to push it backwards i feel like that's gonna cause a lot of creative puzzles and i think it's gonna be a challenging game i think from the first one they're going to adapt more right they're gonna make 
I think they are going to double down on dungeons. I have a feeling we're going to see maybe less shrines, which are, you know, essentially mini dungeons. And maybe they're going to go with the more bigger scale dungeons that people love from the series. Now, I liked the Divine piece. I did think at some point, yeah, it was annoying that each of them had the same mechanic of like rotate the beast in some weird way to solve something. Um, but for the most part, I still enjoyed them. And I just think the gameplay of the game is dope. And I think as long as, you know, they expand the combat options, they, they make it so that like i don't know like they have to make exploring that world rewarding because that's gonna be a long investment i mean i think i played breath of the wild the first and for like a i played it for like a hundred hours maybe um and i didn't even get everything in that world but i did a shit ton of it so i wonder what they're gonna do here to set it like what is gonna make me want to go back to the same area i went to in the first game or these new areas and i think the team understands and they know that they're gonna make a banger game i have no doubt in my mind and i think i saw some people being like what's breath of the wild gonna to do now that elden ring is on like first of all this game has been development for like four years now so it is well past being able to be heavily changed for elden ring purposes and again i just i don't think it needs to like yes it can learn from elden ring in a sense of you know you could like figure out what creative sort of puzzles and environmental things that game did to sort of find your way through areas or or, or stuff or special moves and stuff would be really cool i feel like if zelda took some of this cool because you could do like crazy cool shit in elden ring you, you get a sword that like could shoot a beam a laser beam and fire on it you can you can get like these crazy like special attacks that slam the ground do crazy moves. like there's a lot of crazy shit you can learn um from elden ring but i think breath of the wild again is it is more puzzle action whereas you know elden ring is more like rpg action you know open world and they're a little different in that sense but uh yeah man i just i think either way it's exciting times when you really think about it what's insane is we're march man like we are three months from the e3 slash whatever summer direct we're probably gonna get so we are going to know really uh what this game is all about and i think we're also gonna know whether it comes out this fall or not and i've been i this has been the question right this is the question everyone says like is it coming out this fall or not a lot of people are starting to lean on no i here's the thing right for the longest time i was like this game is definitely coming out in fall people are over exaggerating that's not coming on that's forever away now what i think maybe is that I think having be Pokemon being in November makes me think that they no longer have to hit in the fall because I feel like Nintendo always has a big fall game. You know, there's always a big November slash late October game that is their big, you know, holiday hitter uh, for that season. And I think now that we know Gen 9 is going to be this holiday, I think Nintendo, if they wanted to delay Breath of the Wild, they could be like, okay. It's fine if you do that because obviously Pokemon is going to carry the holiday season for us. And assuming there's nothing else, we don't know if there's like a Mario or something else coming in the fall. But either way, that seems to be uh, what the plan is going to be so far. But I, I, I want it to be this year. I just think that because Pokemon is happening this fall, it does. It no longer has to be because they're going to have Xenoblade in the fall. They're going to have Pokemon, which obviously is a little bit smaller, but I just mean open world, open world. Um, and are they going to need or want three open worlds in one fall season? I don't know. I would love Breath of the Wild too. I have a feeling if it does come out this year, it's going to pull a Smash Bros where like it comes out late december or something like well the first week of december um and i could see that happening but yeah either way i'm just really excited to see what they do with brother wild 2 man in terms of story gameplay world environments and all that stuff and how it's really going to adapt and change because you know a lot of games like i said have have uh, been influenced you know by breath of all but they've done a lot of things that are even cooler you know what i mean like and and that's that's something that the dev team can learn from and i think they will and i think things are going to be even better and like i don't know man if breath of the wild 2 is somehow better than the first one i would lose my shit because the first one is like some of my like one of my favorite games of all time some of the best video game memories i've ever had but guys let me know what you guys think what do you guys want to see most in breath of the wild 2 what do you think what do you just tell me your thoughts you know just talk below air it out let me know what you got to say and of course everybody thank y'all for watching i'll see you all tomorrow with another video and of course i love you goodbye